Welcome to We Gotta Talk, a live weekly talk show and podcast where we like to dig deep. From health to relationships to alternative lifestyles and more, the one thing you will always get is a deep dive. I'm Sunny, a 15-year veteran of TV news, freelance writer, blogger, mom of three, and wife. But most of all, I'm just a die-hard oversharer, someone who's genuinely curious about, well, everything around me. And I can't wait for you to join in on these conversations that I promise will impact, inspire, and entertain you. Now, let's talk. Welcome, everybody, to We Gotta Talk. So glad you were here. This episode is brought to you by a partner that we love here on We Gotta Talk, Romer Skincare. Simple, clean skincare that does more with less. You guys know I am all about simplifying my life lately, and Romer is the same. Simple but effective. Their products are formulated without parabens, phthalates, sulfates, formaldehydes, drying alcohols, pretty much no nasty ingredients in any of these products. And they're packed with good stuff. Manuka honey in their cleanser, hyaluronic acid in shea butter in their moisturizer, and my favorite, the treat mask, has CBD and squalane. So I've been sampling the line, in love with the cleanser, can promise it leaves your skin feeling not only cleansed, but also soft, not over dried like you get with some um, facial cleansers. And their treat mask has become my MVP for the winter months. It is packed with super hydrating ingredients. I'm so excited that Romer is offering us 15% off. So make sure you guys try out the line. And when you do use the code, we got to talk 15 to get 15% off of your order. Try the cleanser to start. The treat mask is also amazing. I also got little sizes of moisturizer all great. If you're looking to streamline with clean, simple products that really work, Romer Skincare is it. Romer Skincare, that's R-O-M-E-R skincare.com and use the code we got to talk 15 for 15% off of your order. All right, guys, it's all about sustainable living here on We Gotta Talk this week. Um, I think we're on episode 110, 111. I can't remember. It's somewhere. Um, but I'm really excited about this episode because this is a topic that I feel feels a little big and difficult to dig into sometimes because when you read things about climate change or things that are happening environmentally, it can feel a little overwhelming. So what we're gonna do today with our guest, Monica Richards, the Eco Babe, is dive into some really practical ways that you can make a positive impact on the world, small changes we can make in different rooms of the home so that you can begin to help the earth a little bit. So we're going to tune in with Monica in just a few minutes, and we're going to tell you all about the amazing work she's doing. But we like to catch up with producer Rachel at the beginning of all of our episodes. So yes. Rachel, if you've been listening, has been doing a cross-country drive. She has relocated from the West Coast and is somewhere not on the West Coast now. Yeah. I don't want to activate all of your stalkers, but <laughs> you made it across the entire freaking country, and I bow down. I don't I know did. how you did that by yourself, Rach. Yeah, so by myself nice. with my dog, Ringo. Um, we drove, it was nine total days of driving. I didn't drive for more than like seven hours. And then I stopped at a couple places in, in the middle of the USA to see my brother and my longest childhood girlfriend. Um, so I got to spend a couple days there. And then, yeah, I'm just like adjusting to time zones. Like every location I'm in is different. I'm trying to set up my can't my camera, my computer set up, and I'm like, where, where is my toothbrush? Where is my blow dryer? <laughs> like, you know, living very, very uncomfortably, but <clears throat> I love it and I'm used to it. I mean, I'm used to traveling for work and, and being on the road. Yeah. So you just adapt, but it was incredible. Or Ringo's my like, what are these smells? What are these East Coast smells? You're going to have seasons again. Everything's going to be snowy and cold. Yay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. Like I love the seasons. I love the weather. And then um, the best part of the road trip was, you know, you see a lot of like semi trucks. <clears throat> yeah. And I got to see a semi truck with a hanging scrotum plastic ball sack on the bottom truck of the nuts. truck. Truck nuts. Truck nuts. Yes. Like, I love truck nuts. My <laughs> swing it. Swing it. Have to be so anatomically correct the way that they hang. Like I'm like, oh, this is troubling to me. My sister and I have an inside joke. Every time we see truck nuts, we snap a picture, and we're like, nuts, nuts on the run. Oh my I god, it's it. crazy. It, I mean, why, it why didn't I think of something like that to make some quick cash? 
I know it made me chuckle. I was like, what is hanging? Oh no, something's hanging. <gasps> it's a sack of nuts and I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, I'm really excited about today's conversation. Do you do anything to make your life more sustainable, Rach? Um, we're going to dive into the few things that I know how to do already, but um, this I'm is a big like interviewer thought yeah. process lately, how to be more sustainable. Yeah, I'm a big recycler. Like I'm all for recycling as much as possible, breaking down the cardboard boxes. And I know the Eco Babe has some extra special tips on like how you can make your Amazon packages be um, come to you eco friendly and like all kinds of stuff. So I've definitely followed quite a few of her tips mm -hmm. and how yeah, to recycle beauty products that you don't use. Also an amazing yeah. website, like you can order this special box because like they don't really recycle correctly um, when you mm -hmm. take like sort of used beauty products that you aren't, that you don't love or whatever, or expired. Um, so I followed some of that. I'm a big advocate of like reusable cups, like not, mm -hmm. like I don't buy water bottles. I bring a water right. bottle with me everywhere, even through the airports, like back. You always that. Even when we worked in news, we would always have our little, mm -hmm. I remember your purple cup with the stainless steel straw. <laughs> I remember yes. that, girl. Yes. Oh, yeah, so you. I, like, you know, I'm into doing that, reducing it as much as possible, but, like, I could definitely do more. What do you yeah. do? Yeah, I, uh, same. I mean, I, w a water bottle will not come into this house unless someone else has brought it in. I am constantly preaching about not buying plastic water bottles to my parents, which they're like, okay, we get it. Um, I have these here, and I'll show Monica. I do um, the reusable cotton pads, which are washable, but, you know, I, I just, I need to know more. I'm always recycling. I'm always removing and breaking down and putting into the right bins, but it's disappointing because most of the time you hear and even news stations have done exposés on how very little of what we put into the bin actually gets reprocessed and recycled, which makes me want to throw up because I have three children coming, growing up in this world that's just slowly dying. So I am looking forward to it. That hack about the Amazon packages, how to get them more sustainably delivered. I'm into it big time. Ask Monica. So, right, I'm going to hop up and you I can will. add that to the list. Yeah. <laughs> and then come, we're going to bring you back at the end because you know sure. we got to dig into the, the um, Harry and Meghan and Oprah thing just briefly. It's topical. You know what I mean? Okay. I, we'll, have, we'll a see thought, I have a strong thought about that. So yeah, we'll talk yeah, after. Wait. But let's get okay. to the good. Love stuff. you. Bye. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm so excited about today's guest. Monica Richards is a former farm girl turned eco-friendly interior designer. She is a TV host in Hollywood. And her brand, Eco Babe, is all about empowering people to master sustainable living in today's modern world. In addition to her Eco Babe blog, YouTube, and beauty shop, Monica also co-founded The Collective, which we're going to get into briefly. Yeah. Monica, thank you so much. Hi, girl. Thank you so you? much for having me. I'm so proud of your reusable cotton rounds. Thank you. You know, you got to start oh, somewhere. Yeah. And someone introduced me to them, and I was like, they're, they're very soft. Um, the one thing I will say is that mm. if you get them, wash them first because I found that they weren't mm. soaking up my toner well until I washed off like the sizing, but they're genius totally. and I love them and they're much softer on my skin. Yeah. Yeah. And they still so. give you like that gentle exfoliation, you know? Yes. Yeah. They absolutely do. So yeah. let's start Monica with what inspired you to not only live more sustainably, more um, friendly to our earth, but also to start to empower other people. Where did this all start? So I grew up in Eco Bay. I was raised on a farm in like the smallest town in Michigan, basically right here. One stoplight, the stoplight was put in after I was already grown. So a really, really small town. And our farm was one of those farms that had like every single kind of fruit tree. The garden was ginormous. My mom would make all of our condiments. I had my own flower garden. I grew up collecting chicken eggs, taking care of the earth, weeding, learning how to grow my own vegetables. And really like, I remember these moments even thinking back of like my parents deliberating on if to use pesticides or not on our fruit trees because of soil health. So I've, I've grown up as a little eco babe. And then uh, I started modeling actually and was supposed to move to LA when I was 18. Thank God that didn't happen. My dad made me go to college. So I went to school and started studying biological anthropology because obviously I have a big love of animals. Um, but with biological anthropology, which is the study of evolution in the great apes, which I'm obsessed with, uh, there's not a whole lot there, um, except if you wanted to teach biological anthropology. So I didn't want to do that. So I transferred into interior design. General contracting kind of runs in my family. And so with interior design, I graduated in interior design 
did interior design in London, England for a while, and then moved out here and worked for this really cool sustainable interior design boutique firm. With that, then I just sound so silly every time I say it, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed, but I, the, I couldn't shake the love for being in front of a camera. So I started pitching this interior design show. And while I was pitching it, uh, the, the people in the room would always be like, well, who do you imagine hosting it? And I'd be like, me, duh, but I had zero credentials, <laughs> zero. So that's how then I found out about Marky Costello, which is who, how I know Rachel, producer Rachel. And Marky Costello is a beast in the hosting industry. I took classes with her for probably five years. And then I started TV hosting for a show on AOL. It was a fashion and beauty show. It was so fun. I woke up at 4.30 every morning wrote, produced, hosted uh, fashion and beauty clips every single day. And then after a few years of that, I was like, gosh, I really don't care about anything I'm talking about. Like I just want to do like more for the world. And then I birthed Eco Babe and put kind of all of my loves of interior design, fashion and beauty, sustainability and sustainable living. And I married them all together into one brand. So, and that brand has evolved too, like with me, which is the coolest thing about having your own brand is like when, as you know, like when you evolve, like your brand also involves and it's really, it's mm -hmm. really fun to, have evolution. I love hearing you hit on all of those topics as we start because there's a sense that if you live responsibly, that you can't be fashionable, you can't enjoy beauty products, you can't enjoy the frivolous things that we've all come to sort of be attached to in one way or another. But hearing you talk about the way that you put those all together, I see that there's space for living sustainably in, in all of those areas. Yeah, and what's cool about nowadays is there's really like an eco swap for everything. You just have to know where to start. So it's been really nice to see the world evolve in the sustainability realm. And they, I mean, the world has kind of made eco accessible and exciting for all, which is my goal as well. But it's it's become a lot easier, which is awesome. I, by the way, oh, I lost you. I'm sorry, Sunny. Stand by there Sunny Rose. Did she click I'm back so in? So jealous of growing up. I can hear you. Yeah, we're oh, back you in. Froze. Monica's re re, re ask go. your question. Sorry. <laughs> I, I can you guys can you hear me now? Yes. Girl, we are used, don't worry, we're used to a technical glitch or two. We worked in this forever. <laughs> how many times how many times this has happened? Um That's I was saying I first. love I'm like jealous of you mentioning growing up on a farm and being connected to the earth and being connected to living things around you. What lesson do you think that that taught you that maybe you didn't realize until now, whether it was anything to do with animals, um, the earth, whatever? It was really just a general respect for mother earth. That was the biggest lesson in living on a farm. It's mm -hmm. just that respect and we have to take care of her. And it's kind of, I mean, the, the, biggest issue nowadays is our consumerism and we are where we are because of our consumerism we're taking resources out from mother earth faster than she can regenerate them and we're not really helping her regenerate and become healthy again to then give us those resources over and over we just keep taking and taking so that respect yeah. for the earth is it was huge and i'm actually a huge soil advocate huge which yeah, so I want to get into that too. There's 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 this um, thought and theory, and Monica, correct me if I'm wrong, that the health of our soil not only impacts the nutritional quality of our yeah. foods, like what we're the vitamins we're getting out of what fruits and vegetables are just not the same that they used to be because it's depleted, right? But there is a way that some people are helping to fix that, right? And how is that happening? Yeah, um, so proud of you that you knew that. That's awesome. So <laughs> with soil, soil actually has the ability to sequester carbon for thousands of years. But with commercial agriculture, the way that we raise these animals and the way that we till the ground, a lot of that carbon is being released back into the air and it's not being re-sequestered down. It's not being drawn down because the soil isn't healthy enough. You have to have really healthy soil for it to sequester and draw down and capture that carbon. Soil health is, I believe it's a huge climate change solution. Um, and, and the way that people are regenerating the soil is with regenerative agriculture, which means that the cows, let's say, are herding in a natural pattern. And the crops um, that farmers are farming aren't monocrops, which means it's not just one crop. They're rotating seeds, they're rotating crops, they're not tilling, they're not doing traditional tilling practices. And that really helps the soil stay healthy 
and it helps mm-hmm. our it helps our nutritional system as well because it's non GMO. Um, you know, and then monoculture goes as far as like what your cows that you're eating eat, right? So like they're producing these this one crop, say it's soybeans, and they're putting pesticides and fertilizer and all these toxins all over it, which also depletes into the soil. And then the cows are eating that, and then we're eating the cows. So it's all connected, and everything mm-hmm. you put into the soil, it really truly travels so far with runoff and rain. So yeah. So I'm going to hit you with a question that I'm sure you've yeah. heard many times when you tell people what you do for a living. And it's going to sound cynical, but I think we need to address the people sitting in the corner yeah. kind of like dubious about this. Um, the earth, here's what, here's what you will probably often hear. The earth is meant to regenerate itself. Climate change is natural. Our earth goes through cyclical temperature changes every X number of years. And this is normal to those people you say, what? <laughs> well, That would be entirely true if we didn't have so many humans on earth that are raised to consume. That's it. And we do a good job of that. We really do a good job of that. You know, sometimes I'm kind of like embarrassed because in, in, in some way we're all part and parcel of the consumer's culture, whether I get on and I tell you about a beauty product that I love or a fashion piece, but I do really try, um, I, you know, we've talked about, I've talked about fast fashion before and how there's a time and space to buy something right for $19. It's going to last for two months, Mm -hmm. but trying to be thoughtful with where we put our money, but it's so hard, right? The temptation to buy cheap and buy new is literally at our fingertips all the time. How do you avoid that temptation? Because you're hit with the same um, triggers that we are. Of course. And you know what? The fact of the matter is there are a lot of people in this world that can't afford anything different, you know? So we have to give grace a lot of grace um, everywhere we turn. But with as far as like ads and consumerism goes, I my biggest tip for living sustainably is to start at the base level. Like, do I really need that? Do I need that? It's okay to want things. Get it. If like, you know, every once in a while you want something, but do a little bit of research, make sure that the products are made ethically, especially with fashion. There's a huge slave labor in in fast fashion it's wild i will tell you about that if you want me to it's crazy yeah um, we're gonna get into that yeah yeah i i want to go through um the yeah. swaps because i know you brought yes. and then we're gonna round out talking about fashion and like okay. brands you love that are doing good by earth yeah. so i was like you know what bring all the little props you can monica yeah. so show us we, we talked about two rooms in particular because mm-hmm. now i'm approaching this from a non-expert angle where i found it was easiest to make inroads was in the kitchen slash laundry room with refillable cleaning products. And this is like yeah. not sponsored. They're not paying me, but I've worked with Branch Basics. So Branch. this is one little thing I did. I do refillable and 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 the cotton thing. So we said, okay, let's do kitchen and um, bathroom. So where do you want to start and, and what, what do you want to show us? So can I say something before we start? Yeah. It really is. Think about sustainability from micro to macro. So just pick a few things and go with it and master those few things and then move on. And that way you'll have fun. You won't become overwhelmed. It really is taking baby steps throughout your eco journey and just pick a few to start with. You are doing so much like your individual actions, even these things that seem very small, make the biggest difference in the grand scheme of things. So just start out small and then keep moving forward. So with that, (laughs) I can show you some stuff. Some fun stuff. Yeah, let's start in the let's start in the bathroom. If you bathroom. have products around there that people right. can can integrate there. So I also love reusable. What are these called? I'm tired. Cotton pads. Cotton pads. <laughs> no, <laughs> cotton pads. Um, there's even ones like this one. I honestly can't remember what brand this is, but you can just search it online. You don't even need face wash. It's supposed to just work with water, which is awesome. Um, mine, so these are like new ones, right? But then mine end up looking like this. <laughs> and you, you wash uh, them after them. every use. Yes. Right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. your skin cells get on them. So you don't want to like recontaminate your skin with an old pad. And these are great right. for like eye makeup removal, toner, uh, and just a general washing. The other thing that I love washing my face with, especially because I use an oil face wash by Beauty Counter. You're a Beauty mm-hmm. Counter fan, right? I'm a beauty yeah, counter girl. I love their stuff. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So baby washcloths are awesome. Um, these are by Marley's Monsters. And so they're organic. But this gives you like that nice gentle exfoliation. And especially with an oil cleanser, you really want to have a warm washcloth and wipe it off so you get all of the oil off. These are awesome. I use them. I travel with these. I use them for everything. 
So I love, love a, ba a baby washcloth and baby washcloths are just gentler than a regular washcloth that you would buy for your body. So they're better for your Yeah, face, like the fibers are softer. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. A big one is my leaf razor. So this is a reusable. So this is basically like a butter, they call it like a safety razor, a butterfly. And these, these little blades are, you refill them. And the coolest thing about leaf, which is why I chose it, A, it has a small handle. Mine's very mm -hmm. used. Uh, a lot of the metal razors have like this huge handle and I just feel like it's hard to manipulate, especially when you have long legs and it takes a while to shave anyways, like who needs that? So I like leaf and their blades, they come in a pack like this, they're recyclable. So you oh, send these that's back. amazing. Okay, wait, mm -hmm. quick question. Hold yeah. that back up again because yeah. the, the reusable razor that I have, the cartridge on top like entirely pops off. You're saying just the blades come out? Can you right. show us? Like, so, about yeah, so you, <laughs> like do this little guy. And then this flips up. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, you unscrew it. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're listening to the podcast, there's, there's like a part on the back of the razor head she's unscrewing and then it lifts it's up. Unscrewed. Oh, and the blades pop. Oh my gosh, that's genius. So it really is yeah. a lot less plastic because I, I have thought about that before. It is smarter to have a reusable mm -hmm. razor, but you're still throwing away a decent amount of plastic with every cartridge. Yes. So that, yes, that are. solves that. And then you can yep. recycle those blades is what you're saying. Yep, they take the blades back. Yeah, which is oh, awesome. And this thing awesome. takes forever to fill the blade. Yeah, and it's super sharp. So, you, I mean, you have to be careful, but um, be, careful. <laughs> be careful with these guys. Uh, but they work really well. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Any other good bathroom hacks let's before we move on to the kitchen? Um, let's, let's move on to the kitchen. Can we talk about laundry really quick? Oh my gosh. Love laundry. Okay. Talk, talk so during laundry. This is like talk. my yeah, love girl. language. <laughs> All right. The guppy bag. It's a huge bag, but this eliminates microplastics from coming off of your specifically leggings, like especially because we're wearing yoga leggings all throughout the day now, you know? Uh, and oh those God. are made of, yeah, they're made of synthetic fibers, like pretty much always, unless you get organic cotton ones, but those don't work as well for working out. You know, you know the drill. So Wait, with can all I tell your, you a funny story about yeah. a recycled pair before you, okay. Yes. I wore, I thought I was being like this badass, like, oh, I'm so <laughs> earth friendly. I wore a pair of recycled leggings to bar class ones and the sweat mark that I got was in the shape of my thong through yep. my butt and all yep. I was all the way to the front. I was like, this, oh I'm God. never wearing these yeah. again. It was so embarrassing. My instructor was like, I was gonna say something, but I was like, no need. Everybody <laughs> already has seen my yeah. last crack. So yeah, we're fine. good. I look so, like a pee my pants. <laughs> Fine. Like we're all we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Oh we're good. God. No shame here. Oh my God. So <laughs> yeah, anyway, I've stayed away. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. So I'll stick with synthetic. Yeah. Yeah. But what does the guppy bag do? Okay. Is it helping to like so, Yeah, so when you wash your synthetic your clothing made of synthetic fibers, you put them in this bag, you just wash it with your regular stuff. But what it does mm -hmm. is it collects all of these fibers that are plastic and it collects it like within these like the corners here and the corners in the bottom and then you take those and throw them away so they don't go in our waterways because i think what something that is hard to to kind of grasp in the environmental world is everything that we put into our waterways it feels like it's just like an abyss right trash too like you put it in there and it's gone bye but really it's affecting everything in its path and destructing everything in its path so a washer is no different. You put everything that you're putting in the washer, including soap, bleach, everything goes into our waterways and into our water systems. So if we can stop microfibers or microplastics, excuse me, like the more the merrier. Um, every single cow right. has microplastics in its belly. They just came out with, with uh, research that uh, microplastics are in utero now and um, and and uh fetuses and so it's just it's like oh our I might have been a placenta i think they're in the placenta but either way it's becoming very internal for people we actually eat a freaking bowl of microplastics every single year within our food our waters yeah it's crazy so if we can stop microplastics yes please do that's a big one <laughs> so let me ask you yeah. this before you put that away they collect in little yeah. pockets and then in the corner yeah. they look like dust what do they look like oh my gosh i don't even have any or not i cleared it out it looks like it looks like the lint that you take from your dryer but like wet and it's very okay. small oh. 
So it doesn't even wow. feel like you're doing that much because they're so small. They're micro, but they collect. And even when they collect, it's like a small little dab that you take out, but you are doing so much just by doing that and eliminating those fibers from our waterways. Yeah. Okay. The gu guppy bag. Okay, guys, the I'm going to get these bag. too. Yes. We'll put these in, we'll put these in show notes. And I may do a separate yeah. blog post on this too, because just to oh keep gosh, it all in our spot. Pico swaps. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes. Love it. Okay. So go ahead and keep, keep going. Okay. We're loving these. Let's do, so COVID friendly hand sanitizer. This is like my new, my new jam lately. It's a refillable hand sanitizer. Uh, mm -hmm. So this comes out, let me see if I can get it low. Comes out like this. And then you refill it. So you're not ever throwing away those tiny plastic bottles. This eliminates um, six bottles, six of those tiny plastic bottles from going to landfill and sitting there and not biodegrading. And the refill is made out of aluminum. It's by Sanakind. Um, I have some fun stuff coming out with Sanakind. They are amazing. And these, these people are the same creators of Final Straw, which is a huge reusable straw company. So this is a great one, COVID friendly. Oh, I love that. People, oh my God. Yeah, especially kids yeah. these days, like yes. they're, they're like strapping those to their backpacks. Something yeah. refillable is good. Like yeah. I and love that. This goes on surfaces too. So you can like literally go like, especially for travel, like put it on a door handle, everything. And it's FDA approved. It's um, world health organization approved. The formula is clean and it's great. One of my favorites. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. I'm all loving right. all of these pots. This little guy is, I'm a huge candle person. Um, you just have to make sure your candles are made of soy wax or a natural wax and mm -hmm. that they're scented with things like essential oils because a lot of traditional candles are literally, they have the same ingredients in them as diesel fuel. So you're like burning diesel fuel into your home and breathing that in. So as long as you yeah, have in, natural in candles, air quality, yeah, yeah yes, you read all yes. about how like the air inside is mm -hmm. sometimes more damaging crazy. than, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so okay. a way Love to that. make your candles last is a little wick trimmer, it's metal. So you always want your candles, the wick to be about a quarter inch tall, and that way it'll last longer and you don't get that gross black ring around your candles while they burn. So this trims Love the it. wick, and then this is my uh, rechargeable candle lighter. It's with a USB, it's charged by a USB, and you light it, and I don't know if you can see this here. Let's see. Yeah. You see it? Oh yeah! yeah. Like, Look at that burn. Like <laughs> burn, baby. Yeah, burn, baby. Okay, so burn. it doesn't so cool. like pop up with a flame. It's like a, a filament. So tiny. Almost. Yeah, and this oh, is how. I, and this is really good for like long candles. You know, for instance, like this would be hard to get a regular lighter in. Oh, and I love it. The stats of how many lighters that go to landfill every year is wild. I can pull it up for you if you want, but like this eliminates all those plastic butane lighters from heading to landfill, which is millions every single year. Oh, I love I that. I love that guy. Absolutely love that. Yeah. And it's, okay, it's food waste. Can we talk about food waste really quickly? Yeah, let's, okay. any and everything. We'll take it all. So this is my little compost bin. This is like my girl. I love this thing. That's so chic. So it's like, I know. You know, it's like, it's like a white tin with like this yeah. like minimal That's writing cute. that says compost. It's yeah, so, cute. so cute. Okay, give us 101 so, on compost though, because right. that feels intimidating. Oh, for like, yeah. am I a composting person now? Like, yeah. what do I do? So the thing about food waste is that America wastes about 40% of food. Food waste, if it were a country, would be as a third largest country behind China and the United States. So we oh waste God. so much food. And the thing about food is that food actually doesn't biodegrade in a landfill. You would think it would because it's natural, but it doesn't receive enough oxygen in the landfill to biodegrade. So it stays there and it releases methane into the air. And once again, we're in the middle of <laughs> a greenhouse gas effect. So the more that we can eliminate that, the better also, because I do um, take care of my food scraps, I literally take out my garbage like once every other month without Stop having it. food, swear, swear. I don't have as many people in my family as you do, so you might take out like once a month. But if you don't have those food scraps in there, you eliminate so much of that heading to landfill. Um, so, so I love what goes in there. Give yeah. us an example okay. of what goes in the compost tin. Okay. So the compost is, is actually a lot easier. I actually don't have a compost bin in my backyard. I can't, like I live in LA. Um, so what I do is I actually renegade it <laughs> into a neighboring green bin where I used to live because my green bin in my alley actually used to accept all food scraps. And so a lot of zip codes do. So, uh, Rachel, 
Do you mind pulling up the Earth 911? And I can kind of show you how to walk around yeah. that. So She's going to look it up and pull it up. Okay, so this is how you can tell if your curbside green bin will accept food scraps. So in the search button right there, Rachel, type in organic food. Okay, guys, she's on earth, earth911.com. Yep, and then okay. plug in 9040, let's do one that accepts it, 90402. Yep, so you just plug in your zip code search, right? So then you'll scroll down and um, you wanna go to, yep, the city of Santa Monica, sorry, the first one the yard waste collection program, because that's what your green bin is, is a yard waste. And then this one does accept um, organic food waste. So, okay. So guys, just so you know, if you're listening on the podcast, there's yeah. this website, it's called earth 911. You're going in, you're inputting your zip code and it can tell mm -hmm. you what types of waste collection is local to your area. So this is yeah. where, so I put the food in the compost and then when I empty it, this is who picks it. This is where it's picked up. Yep. That's the, yep. where this fits in. Okay, got it. So that's more oh. of, a of a commercial recycle, or sorry, commercial um, composting, composting system. Yes. Perfect. So oh, I love that they're making it more accessible. Yeah. And if you don't have Otherwise, this, if your area code doesn't accept it, which mine doesn't now, which is like the biggest thing I was literally like, do I not move into this place because it doesn't accept food scraps? Like, what am I going to do? Um, I found a, a zip code near me. So I collect my scraps now in the freezer in a brown paper bag. And then I'll take those once it's full to that alleyway and just dump it in the green bin. However, you can also compost in your backyard. There's really cool um, composting systems with worms and they're like very... They're very city friendly, which is super cool. Okay, questions people are thinking yeah. right now in their heads. Do compost bins stink? If you have something in your kitchen mm -hmm. and you're putting, and what are you putting into it? Like say I'm oh. making a sandwich, I'm cutting off the crust. Yes. That goes right in. Like it doesn't matter. It's just food yeah. items. It could be a banana peel, like whatever. Yes. So if you get the right bin, it will not smell. Outside with the worms, of course, it'll smell because it's, it's being um, decomposed. But this guy does not smell ever um you can also and you put, put in everything freezer. in there mm -hmm. everything except dairy or meat you don't want that stuff in a compost except eggshells no. are like the one thing that you can put in there that's dairy eggshells are great for and, compost and the worm composting system yeah. is different that's sort of its own little ecosystem that goes that's a self-enclosed kind of thing that goes outside oh, outside okay. yeah you get all of this stuff like easily on online and stuff like these yeah. kits online okay you can get these worm oh my gosh I sh I'll, I'll look it up for you for your eco swap blog but it's it's like crazy uncle bob's worm farm or something but he has these really cool like city friendly um basically worm compost and they also have ones even on amazon there's one in my amazon shop actually it's a tower and you grow plants out of this tower but then within the middle of the tower is where you put your food scraps and the worms. So it's like a self-composting, self-growing tower of goodness. That's uh, so cool. Have, I feel yeah. like my kids would be into that big Yeah. Time. Oh my gosh. Totally. Yeah. It's super cool. And then also, if you don't want to do any of that, you can make, um, you can make veggie broth with your food scraps. So you would collect it in the freezer, right? There's a, there's a recipe on my blog for veggie broth. So you collect all your food scraps in the freezer and then you basically like cook them down with a bunch of water and it gets really heavy and dense. And then whenever you want to use your veggie broth, you get like a scoop of that from the fridge and then mix it with water and boil it up. And then you know what's in your veggie broth that way as well. So there's, there's ways yeah. to work around not wanting to like, if you feel like composting isn't for you, totally understandable, but there's ways to work around it. You could also make a veggie smoothie with your food scraps for your plants. So it's like, it's like a it's like a natural fertilizer kind of that you can mm -hmm. just put everything in the blender, mix it with water, and then it, it's better for outdoor plants. But um, yeah, plants love it. Do you feel like everybody is going to be doing this? Like we're talking about composting right now, like it's something, yeah. and it is something that's a little less common. How soon yeah. do you foresee this being the norm? Like given how things are going right now on our planet. Do you mean like globally or in America or? In, in America. <laughs> like I want to know because, you know, um, what's interesting about your platform is that you, not only are you putting out the information, but on Instagram, you're mm -hmm. you're talking to people and I'm sure you're hearing yeah. the, the same concerns, which is Monica, this feels like a lot of work. Monica, where mm -hmm. do I get this? How do I do that? And there's like also the stigma of like, okay, if you're the first person in your group of friends that's yeah. starting to make these changes, yeah. listen guys, I'm not buying plastic anymore, but they're going to be like, okay, you're extra, whatever. 
But th- these are real or emotional hurdles, I think, that mm-hmm. people face when they want to try something new. So based on what you're hearing from people, do you think this is becoming like the cool thing, for lack of a better term, to do now? And how soon yeah. do you feel like this will catch on on a widespread level? I feel like it's becoming actually a lot more popular in cities because a lot of farmers markets you can take your food scraps to and then those farmers will take it to their farm and compost. Um, and I know like cities like Brooklyn are very compost friendly. So I think I think especially with government regulation, which I know Los Angeles is heading in that way to make compost very easily accessible with via everyone's green bin. I think it's gonna take government intervention to make it really streamlined in cities. But I, I, I do believe we're heading that way. So I would, I mean, I'm hoping in the next 10 years that we're all just composting as like everyday life. Like, yeah, you don't compost, mm-hmm. why, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I'm thinking about the first time I heard of it and it was like, yeah. it was, uh, you know, a Canadian person mm-hmm. at the time, of course, because <laughs> they're like always a little more, you know, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, what is, yeah. what's sitting on your mom's counter? And he's like, it's a composting <laughs> thing. I was like, what? Yeah. This American, I was like, what? Yeah, right. um, but yeah, I love it. No, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Do you have any like, um, I don't want to like scare people, but any stats you use to scare people to like get their ass oh in here? Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Not more like it's not. It's not as much scare people. But this is this is my favorite. I'm gonna read it to you because I just, I don't remember numbers. I can barely remember like my own birthday. Um, I should have had this pulled up already. But it's about paper towels. Um, here we go. Thanks. Thanks, producer Rachel. So this is a stat, and and this really proves that every decision that we make, 100 million percent freaking matters. So it, this is in America. So just think of us in America, and then think of a global scale as well. So in America, we use 13 billion pounds of paper towels each year. Paper towels weigh nothing. That's insane. It's a lot. Per person, that means we use 40 pounds or 80 rolls per year, just like per, you know, per person. Every day, that means that 51,000 trees are cut down for those paper towels. 51,000 trees are cut down every day for paper towels, along with 60 million gallons of water to make those paper towels. So not only are we wasting paper towels, but we're also wasting the resources that make those paper towels. So then get this, here's the good news, guys. So if we reduced usage by just one paper towel sheet a day per person, we would save 571,230,000 pounds of paper towel waste in America each year. By using one less sheet a day. And that is your small daily action. I love it. Oh, Monica, this is yes. genius. You yes. know, for the record, I'm, I come from a home where we would cut up old yeah. t-shirts for rags. Oh, I mean, yeah. We a yeah. rag clean. Mm-hmm. My kids reach for paper towels and like, no, those are for small <laughs> But that is yeah. because that's like you said, but one small thing. Yeah. That, there you go. You start there. You start with a cotton swab. Yes. You start with, oh, here's what I wanted to ask you. Do you know anything about the reusable Q-tips? That's the one thing that I haven't bought oh, yet that I'm okay. curious about. So last swab um i have them i yeah. am more of like i like cotton q-tips like organic cotton yeah. i do have one for beauty that i use that i feel like it's just much more doable so you know in my own journey like i'm doing micro steps as well i haven't gotten to like the reusable q-tip yet but i use the reusable beauty tip which is by the same brand and it's great for like when you mess up your eyeliner or something um, mm-hmm. I use Q-tips mm-hmm. in my beauty routine all the time. So it's it's more for that. And I fully can get on board with that. But, you know, the Q-tip, the reusable Q-tip, like you have to wash it and it has earwax. I don't, I'm, I haven't gotten there yet, but a lot of people <laughs> yeah, love it. And they've, okay. raised, they've, a, they've raised a lot of um, funding for it, which means that it's it works and people do like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. But you know what? Yeah. I love that you were candid about that because yeah. maybe that's not a swap you make, but maybe it's right. comfortable for someone else. And starting somewhere <laughs> yeah. is better than whatever, you know, yes. Yes. Than, than not trying at all. Are totally. there any... Um, sort of words or inspiration you want to leave us with we had can't chatted um briefly about the collective too yes. and i want to get to that which is an incentive that i know you and yeah. a few other change makers are, are kind of contributing efforts to so let's yeah. talk about that and what that is sure thank you so the, here's the collective 
So I launched The Collective a year ago because what I realized was there wasn't really a community where you could come together in a healthy space and learn how to be eco-friendly and really deep dive in, right? So I launched The Collective February 14th last year. I recently um, brought on and merged with a similar community called The Action Squad, which is Anne Therese Gennari's Action Squad. There she is on the right. And she's a climate optimist. I just saw your blog with her. Uh, she did a beautiful blog for you uh, talking all about climate optimism. So within the collective, now it's a global community. We have members from all over the world. And it's so fun because we get on these Zooms and like you'll see someone sign on from the Alps or, you know, from Germany. And it's just so cool to connect. Like I love that connection. And in addition to being a healthy community with amazing connection that, that members really, really appreciate. We also deep dive into one new eco topic each month, and that's how we stay organized. And then within that month, we uh, purchase for members a documentary that, that um, coincides with the eco topic, and we lay out an initiative. So it's really all about learning and applying. We also sit down with an expert in that related field or a panel of trusted experts. And then Anne teaches her climate optimism class once a month. And then at the end of the month, we hop on a clubhouse call just to connect and um, chat. And we'll like announce the next month's theme. And we'll talk about the film that we watched and how the initiative that we're backing is going. So, you know, this isn't everyone's job. It is my job and Anne's job. So we really like to lay out all the details. So when you get into the collective, you can learn as much or as little as you'd like, and you can easily take action because the steps are all laid out for you. To do and so. the website is collectivexaction.com, yes. correct? Yep. Okay, so for anyone listening, there check that is. out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, you guys are bringing a very, um, broad topic down to yeah. very actionable tasks and items. Mm -hmm. And that's great because like I said in the, in the article that I did with Anne, when we were talking yeah. about climate optimism, optimism as a theory is that unfortunately there only seem to be two ways to get at climate change. And one mm -hmm. is fear and which is based and rooted mm -hmm. in, in the science of what's actually happening. And the other is denial, which purports to be rooted in science too. Mm -hmm. And you don't ever find a way to address what is obviously an issue with some optimism and some positivity. So I'm just yeah. grateful that she's bringing that way of discussing this topic into existence because it seems more productive in some way, you know? It does. And it, you know, ch creating change is, my favorite analogy is not everyone is going to run to that fire. No, no one is. Fire, fires are scary. So they need to see you with that bucket of water running towards the fire and then they're going to follow suit but it really just takes us making those first steps for people to be like oh i can do that too you know and so that also comes in with ann's climate optimism class where creating change actually creates happiness hormones within you like the four happiness hormones and so once you start creating those that change and those daily steps that you're taking within your within your lifestyle at home all of those actions actually create these happiness hormones that make you want to do more because you're doing something for the world for the planet for its, for her people and for her animals so you want to keep going forth and it's scientific because you're literally releasing all of these happiness hormones while you're taking mm -hmm. action yeah, I love it. It does. It feels good to be empowered. And 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 that yes. one paper towel statistic alone was enough to show us that our actions do add up. Yeah. That was crazy. Well, Monica, tell us where we can find you, where we can track you down on Instagram and connect. And I'm presuming you get a ton of questions on social too. So where people can connect with you directly. Thank you. So my Instagram handle is at the eco babe. That's across all social platforms. My website is ecobabe.co. We're actually going to be adding some cool products. Oh my gosh, wait, I have one. I have Ecobabe Blast Straws, by the way. They just came out. They're not even on the website. Oh yeah, yet. show us that. And, and we're doing a little giveaway of one of those with a, a bundle, guys. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So Do they come with like a little cleaner too? Yes, I got a little cleaner. Okay. Um, so the cool thing about glass straws is they don't change temperature while you're using them. So you can use them in hot, cold, anything. And then while you're cleaning them, you can actually see if it's clean. Instead of, as opposed to like a metal straw, you kind of have to guess. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. A lot more friendly. yeah, so I love these and they say Eco Babe on them. And actually I, um, I partnered with Simply Straws, which is a woman owned beef corp here in LA to make these. And with, I kept their, um, their signature on here because with this, it's like a certification that it is lifetime guaranteed. So if your straw breaks, Simply Straws will replace it. 
Are they dishwasher safe too? If we ever want to just throw them in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I do it all the time. I put everything in the dishwasher. I literally don't have time. So <laughs> I know. Plastics yeah. on top. That's the only thing I say. Oh my God. Even heating up plastics. That's a separate conversation. My husband yeah. tries to put plastics on the bottom and I'm like, were you raised by wolves? No. Yeah. And I'm just like, like an old eighties dishwasher rule. But remember we used to open it when we were growing up and it'd be like, mom, you know, my, my bowl melted. And she's like, you oh, put no. it on the bottom. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Okay. Um, well, you are a shining light, Monica, and I'm grateful you. that you've spent time with me this morning. Always. Thank you so, Thank so, you so much. much for yes. me. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll be down your door for more info at some point, I'm yes, sure. But thank please. you again. Yeah. And I'm so, I feel like I'm missing out on the, what'd you call them? Like the nut truck, the truck nuts. I'm, is oh, truck like, nuts. Is this not, I'm out west. Is this not a west thing? Like, I really feel like I'm missing you out. Know, it's like you might be a little more refined on the West Coast. I don't know, but like growing up, yeah, there are these little plastic things. Here's the real interesting part: the psychology of the person that uses the truck nuts. Who decides oh, I want to throw them on the back of my truck today? Yeah. I just want to snack. It's very weird, but they're like made to look like a scrotum, and you hang them on there, and they just swing as people try. Oh my God, there they oh, are! Producer, there they are. Oh, oh my God! Wait, oh my gosh, that's a huge one. That's hilarious. So that's oh a, that takes gosh, some big balls. Yeah. Look at the guy in the middle. Rage, click the guy out. in the middle sitting yeah. over his truck nuts. I'm definitely See? missing out. I've never seen this in my in my life, and I'm from the Midwest. So I don't know. Oh my yeah. god! That's yeah. Hilarious. Oh, those are really big. Yeah. So you know, keep your eye out. Now that you know that they exist, you'll see them everywhere. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> be right back. Moving to Florida, so I can see this. <laughs> oh, I might, girl, be, I might be anyways. Here. So yeah. Oh yeah, I might be welcome under, you with open I might arms. Be under, thank you. Yeah, we'll see. Either New York or Miami, but we'll see. Oh, yeah. oh, it's awesome down here. Florida gets a bad name, but you know we get to be outside in February and oh, in shorts. So I have oh yeah, that's why everyone's moving yeah. to Florida. Yeah, we're welcoming a lot of new people. So, um, all right, Monica, thank you again, babe. I totally appreciate it. Thank all right, you. we'll see you. Soon. Thank you. Bye. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. I feel like um I feel like I could be friends with her. Is that weird to say, Rachel? Like that I just want to like call her now. Um I told yeah. her when I talked to her beforehand, I'm like, oh, you and Sunny are so similar in so many ways. I feel like you're gonna just click. I, so yeah, I could yeah. nerd out about all of these things that she knows so much about. Um I so like too much. that you know taking a topic that is scary. You know, if you talk about this kind of stuff and people are like, okay, like you're stop acting like better than everyone. I'm like, you don't know about her. But it's true. Like, who are you to walk away from what's happening in the world and take no ownership? At least if you do one thing mm -hmm. and know you're having a positive impact, I feel like it is our responsibility oh, to yeah. like wise up on this stuff. You know, we're wait, not better than that. Wait, we need yeah. to have Monica tell us about the Amazon shipping. Monica, oh, how do we do the here. boxes? I forgot how oh, yeah, yeah. to ask you. So sorry, uh, I, I forgot to include that. So Amazon won't like actually ship you always with eco things, but you can go into the chat, into the customer service and say, hey, put me down. I want eco-friendly packaging right now. And they do get better. In addition to that, Rach, do you, remember, yeah. do you have a website, the plastic film? Yeah, I do. Website? Okay, so there's a website that you can go to and you can see where you can locally drop off all of this crappy plastic to be recycled properly. It's called plastic film recycling. So where you would go, Rach, mm -hmm. is scroll down. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, so it's plastic film recycling right there. Is this .org or .com, Rachel? It's .org. Okay, so plasticfilmrecycling.org. You plug in your zip code and then directly you can go, yep, 90403 if you want. And then, yep, there we go. Oh and my so goodness. That, it'll so give you that's all the plastic that you get, like your your bread bags, your Amazon stuffing in the box, like yep. all of that. All of that. The the wrap that comes, the, the plastic wrap that comes around your toilet paper even. It's called the film. Um, so all of the films, all the plastics that you can't normally recycle in your recycling bin. COVID has messed us up a little bit. So just call ahead and make sure that there's still recycling and right. accepting those plastics. But I, as you see, like the list that you just got is like extensive. And so those are I, grocery I, stores, Vons yeah. for people who don't Target, know. Yeah. yeah, Target accepts like all that Coles. bubble wrap. Yeah, everything. Target's a great one too. I wonder if they take yeah. uh, grocery bags, do you know? Yes, yes they, do. they do. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's huge. Target I'm accepts gonna... grocery bags as well. And I'm gonna start doing that. Okay. Yeah. So I just have like a little thing that I have collected in my storage cabinet, and then I take it in like once it's filled. 
Yeah. Oh, and tell everybody about your um, Zoya nail polish. Oh my gosh. Ooh. I have it. Hold on. Go get it. Go, so get it. it. go run and grab Go get it. it. Come I'm back. like, I, I obviously like love Monica and I know her and like, I follow her on social and I see all her things and I support her like a hundred percent. And I'm like, Oh, talk about the nail polish. I mean, we could talk about 500 million things you can so do that cute. are eco-friendly, but you have yeah. a special collection with that. I do. So it was limited edition. It's all. It's already um, because what we do matters. That's our on there. But I'm I'm coming out with uh, more collaborations with other brands that I love. Uh, so watch out for more capsule collections for sure. And there's this is what it looked like, but I feel bad. It's like maybe it'll come back. Do we want it to come back? I can ask them. So it's this collection. Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, now, what do you like about that brand, Monica? That's more so, sustainable or responsible. Yeah. So with nail polish, what you actually, the, the biggest tip is to look for pregnancy friendly nail polish, because, uh, that means it's non-toxic. So there's not like formaldehydes, all of that crap in this nail polish. This is all non-toxic mm -hmm. Zoya. And they have a set that I love. It's called the, the naked manicure set. And I mean, it looks like this and it's like, I do it all the time at home and it's four polishes. It dries in like five minutes. I, I mean, I don't, I'm the, I'm a middle child. I'm the worst nail painter on the face of this planet. And they always look perfect with this little set. And you can get on Amazon for like 30 bucks. So it's the, called the it, it was the Zoya, Zoya naked nail set you said? Yeah, the naked manicure I'm set, yes. Down. Yeah. And they, I love Zoya. It's all non-toxic, pregnancy friendly. And then also like, you don't have to feel bad if your kids want to paint their nails with whatever you're using, you know, it's safe. So yeah, I love it. I love them. Awesome. And also, I was going to tell you, Sunny, really quickly. I'm so happy to offer any of your audience a free month at the collective. So just DM me. I'm like any any person in your community is a person of our community, and we would love to have them in the collective. So please, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'll have them reach out to you on Instagram. That's the best Thank way to you. do that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fully totally available. Yeah. <laughs> Thank that you. Is so sweet, Monica. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Guys. Thank Thank you. you. Thank okay. You. We, got, we got it all. We got it all. <laughs> I did look at the notes that I took. I, know. I was like, I'm writing the website. So I am going to do a blog post because I yeah. feel like people are going to want to go back and find in one place by room, by, uh, so we have the bathroom, the laundry yeah. slash living room and the kitchen. And I'll, I'll link also, all the products that you mentioned and the websites too yes. that we talked about. And Monica has cute. an Amazon shop, right? Like with all her eco. Oh, well, so yeah. there's like a we'll shop with almost minute. all the things she mentioned. There's a lot of the products like are right there. So if you're curious, um, you can scroll that. We'll link that in there as well. We'll but link yeah. that in the blog post too. Okay. There's so many um, easy things we can do. Like if we can adapt to recycling you know, just like as simple as like, I remember growing up as a kid, like when recycling became a thing, you know, it was like, in the 90s, oh, you know, like yeah, like, oh, we have to sort this and da da da. And like, now it's just easy. Like we just, do, just it. do it. And just yeah. like she's saying with the composting, like we're just going to start composting. Like it's just going to yeah. take time. And, and she's totally yeah. right. I think I'm going to look into the worm farm, like yeah. the tower thing. I feel like the kids would really like that. We just bought our first Chia Pet the other day, a baby Yoda <laughs> Chia Pet. And they're, that's not a they're pet. into it. It's that's not a plant. A, it's the only pet that's coming into this house, I'll tell you that. I can't take care of one more living thing. No, I want to just, no. No more no, no more things with, with whose butts I have to wipe around here for a long time. No, um, no, but no, yeah, no. the Chia Pet, I feel like that would give them, and the worm farm would give them ownership of a little bit of a creature kind of thing that they could care for. So yeah, I'm understanding I'm how that. like the soil and the planet and waste works, why you can say, yeah. um, Monica saying they would love the worms because worms are super cool anyway. Like oh, yeah. and seeing them eat and then like knowing when they don't recycle or if they don't throw away their food, like so total teacher, Teacher parent moment. <laughs> like they hate you need to teach anything this, else. They but, hate you know. this teacher. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, we have like a few minutes. I have to get yeah. your hot take on this interview. This is like, by the way, we know this is unrelated to the topic, but it, when this is coming out, we're like mm -hmm. two days beyond the Oprah Meghan Markle interview, one day beyond when it aired in the UK. It, Pierce Morgan has now been fired or not been fired. He's right. voluntarily left the show. So this is like a developing story. You know, two news girls can't keep away from a breaking story. So yeah. I want to hear your hot take on the interview before we wrap. I don't give a fuck about Meghan uh, Michael <laughs> or Prince Harry. I have no, no he, empathy for her. 
I have no sympathy. I'm like, you knew what you were getting into. Harry knew. I don't support, obviously, the racist comments right, and like course. all of that. Like all of that, of course, is super wrong. Should not have been, ha like shouldn't have happened. She should, of course, come to like the table to discuss that. But like, as far as like her treatment, I just like, I don't buy it. I don't care. I, I want to care, but I just don't care. There are so many other big issues and real people who don't have like millions of dollars and like all of this ability and fame. I just, I don't, I can't care about it. Like there are people dying on the streets that I see walking every day. And I just am like, Oprah, let's go back to the Oprah show and let's bring on the real people who had real stories mm -hmm. that you shared and people in your audience who you talk to and like bring those people on to be able to relate to what Meghan Markle is saying, because like, it's not relatable to me. And like, Yes, the black and 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 the racist angle, I fully understand, and like that's not cool in any way. But like everything else, just just go live your private life, then, girl. Weren't you like, yeah. oh, I want to be the non-press I... peep. We're not about press. We're private. Well, like I just, I can't, I can't, I can't care about it. I want to like, it's a lot. I wanna, but Here's... I can't. Yeah, I mean, I I think the mental health aspect horrible feel horrible for her about that but like all, all empathy extended all empathy extended on she can any, go get help it's not like she can she said she couldn't remember she said that she no, claims that's that the bull. institution there is yeah. there are online therapists today there's no way they are blocking her internet in the castle in the cloud to go online she needs to ring up headspace is what you're saying Talk he space talk space the one that michael phelps i'm sure she knows him she yeah. could have gotten a free subscription like this is just i can't i can't and like everything that diana went through and everything we've seen on the crown like she, yeah. and here's the thing i've never seen that she i need to watch that chose, show after this sunny she chose to enter this life she chose yeah. to become a member of the family and if you don't want to do that and you're you think you're going to get to be like miss Hollywood, like obviously it's not the case. And you know what? Well, Good for her to like put the put the royal family on blast for the way they mistreat people. Fine. Right, right. But like I just I'm like, but I don't really care because like I'm yeah. not a royal and the royals don't affect me. And there's other shit we have to worry about. Like, shouldn't we be it more concerned about saving you. the planet, Sonny? Like that's I'm a little Amen. more concerned about that. That's a way to wrap it back. No, I do. I do think it did reveal it, in some to wrap this discussion. I do think yeah. what it did reveal. And I agree that there is um there's an element, there's a huge part of me that has sympathy for the things that she said that do matter, but the other part is kind of like it is what it is. You want to be private, private. But um, it just goes to show you that we are how different we are from the country that we Mm -hmm. We separated from so violently hundreds of years ago. Like, thank God we found our own identity. Americans are like, what the fuck is this? Like, no. uh, you you can't take a. I here's what I love about it. Here's what I love about Megan, what? despite the criticism. She is an American woman through mm -hmm. and through. You can't tell her what to do. You can't tell right. her to shut the fuck up. She's like, no, I want to tell you more. Here's because if I look at Megan and Kate, I mean, I'm more of a. I'm more of a Megan, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm a little more. I'm a little less polished. I'm a little less reserved. Um, and I like that's what I like. I'm going to leave it on a positive note. Okay. I like that you know, one of our girls stepped up into the spotlight and was like, yeah. "Listen, here's how we do great. it in America." <laughs> like, cool, great, like, like golf yeah. clap. But like, there's so many other things, and like, I also just don't believe her. I don't believe you her. Don't. There's, so, I mean, yeah. there's something about her that I just am like, I'm a little skeptical of you. Now, whatever that means, take it or leave it. Because right. like, here's here's who I want to see do a one-on-one -on -one with Oprah, Britney Spears. This poor mm -hmm. soul who is stuck under yeah. a conservatorship with her father that like, if you watch that documentary about Free Britney, the, I did, the way I, the system okay. is set up, she's never going to be able to free herself. But here's here's my moment of um, not critique, but sort of questioning of that thing. Britney Spears is not capable of living a healthy, independent life. There is no one that can tell me. I do not think Jamie Spears is a bad man. I don't think he's taking right. advantage of no. her. I think if my child had 
I am not a doctor, but there is everything that indicates, given the media and the content she's putting out in the world, that is not a stable mental person. Right. I would die before someone would be able to get at my child and take advantage of them in any way I stand with his yeah. desire to protect her. I think there is no nefarious um, intent there. And these people, who, free Brittany, no. <laughs> Brittany is not okay. Let Brittany heal. I, okay. She is not a person who could step out into the world, I but feel. But then explain to me, how can she perform the way she did you know in why? Vegas on stage and perform at that level and not have a meltdown and start sharing pictures of, of butterflies and fairies? Like, she is have just a furry child and like i no, can't i want Brittany she's not the, to i be think okay. she had yeah i hope Brittany is okay i don't see an okay person i think but he here's a, you know why she, she's okay because that was rehearsed because that's choreography it's like mm. when you it's it's body memory it's it's who she is as a person it's almost i mean you can't take that essence out of a person that does not mean she is mentally stable or capable you don't you do not lose your children there are things that we don't know you don't lose custody of your children unless there is a very apparent issue. And I think there is so much we don't know. And it annoys me to see people dropping these, these messages, like, you know, as if she is, um, she has enough to deal with, as if she's a victim in another way. I don't know. I may be I the only person in the world that feels like the conservatorship actually is helping her. Oh, I just, me, I don't know. I think the conservatorship is good, though I do think it should, it should be a neutral party. I think, or have her yeah, dad and another it. neutral party yeah. over her person so that she can have somebody who is going to be neutral in listening to her choices and decisions. Yeah. I think- yeah. I, I don't think, and she's like, yeah, I'm fine. Have a conservator over my money. Like, I don't care. She doesn't care right. about that. She wants to be able to be free to do what she wants. And when you yeah. look at the trauma that she went through at such a young age, it's like, no wonder she's having a hard time functioning in society, yeah. you know? Oh anyway, God, there's so a whole, like, oh, see, there's so many other topics and like things and like, I'm not, to, not saying that race and being mistreated by a royal family who is, you know, this very powerful, um, intriguing group of people in the world, right? Like, that is not okay to be treating anybody that way. But also like, let's talk about the mental health and wellness of, of, people and what's a conservatorship and who else are under conservatorships and how many more people in COVID have probably had to go undergo something like that because of the stressors of the world. You know, I mean, I just, mm -hmm. I just, I, I'm obviously team Brittany always and always have been. So like her over Brittany, Megan like or, or, or the Royals any day in my book, she's my royalty. Um, but anyway, that's, that's where I stand. We can fight about it. We, everybody's got their own. I love opinions. it. Listen, just, we don't have to, we, we can be team both, right? We don't have well, to yeah. have one or the other. I do think Brittany needs a little help though. She does need help. She does, but I want her to be yeah. like free to make music and dance and let out that creative spirit because it has been stifled, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, that's me. it. Okay. You, we I'm need, we'll, we'll do box. a separate episode of hot takes. I'm off <laughs> we'll do a separate episode of pop culture hot takes. With Seriously. Okay. okay. Anyway. Um, Rach, you're the best. Thank you so, so much. Um, guys, as always, thank you for listening, watching. Please do take a moment, leave a five-star rating and review. That makes a huge difference in getting these out to people who might find this information helpful or useful. You can find all of the topics we cover on the blog, wegotatalk.com. Just click the blog tab at the top or just go to wegotatalk.com slash blog. You're going to find breakdowns of all the interviews we do, relevant show notes, et cetera. So this is a truly packaged deal. We've got stuff written. If reading is more your thing, you listen to the podcast. And of course, the show is on facebook.com slash wegotatalk. Um, thank you again so much for listening and watching. We'll see you next week with more goodness here on We Gotta Talk.